Hey guys, I'm here to show you the second circuit that we're going to be using our button in in our level two class. Uh, this circuit is the first time we are going to be using our button as an input. So by input, I just mean a component that is sending a signal to our robot. If we think about our servo motors, our LEDs, and our buzzers from our previous class, uh, those are all components that expect a signal from the robot. The robot is sending some sort of electrical signal to get them to work in the way that they are. Uh, the button instead is going to send a signal back to the robot to let the robot know what's going on. And I actually have here on this piece of paper drawn the two circuits that are going to be necessary to make this possible. So we can see here on the left um, our uh, old friend the LED circuit from our level one class. We should be fairly familiar with this uh, circuit although I can understand it's been some time. Uh, on the right hand side on the other hand is a slightly more complicated circuit involving the button, uh, resistor, it looks like one of the digital pins, pin 2. Uh, so let's walk through that circuit and what it's doing really quick. So we'll start here at 5 volts. And we see 5 volts is going through this resistor and I specifically said it's a 10k ohm resistor. So unlike the LED circuit, I'm kind of being particular about which resistor I want here. Um, after that resistor, we have this end connected to both pin 2 and to one side of the button. And the other side of the button is just connected to ground. So let's think about what this circuit's doing. If the button has not been pressed, there is no ground on this circuit. It's as if this piece of the circuit does not exist. So pin 2 only has access to 5 volts. So pin 2 will read 5 volts or high as long as the button hasn't been pressed. But when the button has been pressed, pin 2 now all of a sudden has access to G and D, to ground. And the question is, which does it pick? Does it pick ground or does it pick 5 volts when it has access to both? Well, in this circuit, it picks ground. Uh, what this 10,000 ohm resistor is doing is it's more or less adding distance between 5 volts and pin 2. So it's much easier for pin 2 to see this electrical signal because there's less resistance than there is this electrical signal. So when this button is pressed, pin 2 is grounded. And when it's not pressed, pin 2 is at 5 volts. All right, so having explained that, the only thing left to do is to build our two circuits. So here, looking at the circuit that we had built previously on our breadboard, I'm going to actually take this apart. I can leave the button on there because I'm going to just end up putting that right smack dab in the same place as before. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the simpler circuit first. Um, and then I'll move on to this button circuit afterwards. But let's go ahead and build our LED circuit, which I'll go through with you even though I feel like, you know, you probably still remember, but this is, you know, just in case. So I'm going to go ahead and build the LED circuit on this side of the breadboard down here, kind of away from the button. I'm just going to try and keep them separate uh, to help avoid confusion. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yellow wire and I'm gonna place it in pin seven. Now I'm using yellow just because I prefer to have uh, yellow or green wires attached to the numbered pins, uh, the programmable pins on the uh, Barnabas noggin. Uh, just a tool to keep track of what's going where and what's doing what. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the breadboard right there. All right, then I want the long leg of my LED to be in the same row as that yellow wire, um, and then the short one can be in any other unused row. I'm just gonna go ahead and bridge it across like so. So I have one leg here, and then one leg right here. And remember that because they're on opposite sides that those two legs are in fact on different rows. Remember that unless the button's there, those uh, two sides are not connected across the middle. All right, then I'm gonna take the 
resistor that we had on our uh, circuits previously. I'm gonna put one leg in the same row as the short end of the LED. So resistor leg here, short leg of the LED, same row. And then I'm gonna put the other leg of the resistor into a row I'm not using. And then finally, I'm going to put a black wire in the same row as that leg of the resistor. And then the other side, just into G and D on the Barnabas noggin. So this is the uh, LED circuit that we all know and love from before. All right, now onward to this circuit here. All right, so now things are starting to get a little bit crowded as you can see. Now I'm gonna start by connecting five volts onto the breadboard. So I have red wire here. Here is five volts. And then I'm gonna put it up here. So notice that the five volt wire is not on the same row as the button. Because I want a strong resistor, a 10,000 ohm resistor, which has an orange band to actually bridge between that wire and the button. So really quickly before I move on, I'll make sure we're all on the same page. I've got this red wire and one leg of the resistor on the same row. The other leg of the resistor is on the same row as this leg here of the button. So far so good. So I've just done this part of my circuit. Now I need to connect the other side of the button to ground, which is easy enough. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry. I've only done this part of the circuit. I have not even connected it to pin two yet. My mistake. All right, so the other side of the button for us is this, oh, excuse me. The other side of the button for us is the bottom row of the button. So I'm gonna take one side of a black wire, once again, and this side of this black wire is on the same row as this leg of the button here. And then the other side of this black wire can actually go into the same row as this black wire here, because this black wire is already grounded and then putting this one on the same row as it makes sure that this black wire is grounded as well. All right, last but not least, we do need to connect our button to pin two. So if we look here at our circuit, we've got kind of a crowded mess over here. So we have one side of the resistor, one leg of the button, and pin two all kind of touching each other. So I gotta make sure I mimic that on this circuit. So. If we look closely, I have one leg of the button and one leg of a resistor on this row, on this third row here. So I'm going to make sure I put this wire on the same row as those two other guys. So this row now has yellow wire, one leg of the button, one leg of the resistor. It's kind of hard to see that resistor leg, I know. And then this side of the yellow wire will now go into the pin labeled pin two. And there you have it. Looks like a bit of a jumbled mess at the moment, but this is correct as far as I'm aware. We'll find out in the next video, I guess. Uh, one thing to note about this circuit is I plug in power. One, this LED doesn't light up because pin seven has not been programmed yet. And this button no longer affects the LED whatsoever. So because the button is now set up as an input to pin two, I now have to program some behavior to the button before it actually does anything.